I recognized that when I was working on multi-part projects in Visual Studio Code, opening up and switching between them takes more time than it should. So I decided to make a research and I found out that Visual Studio Code has a feature called Workspaces. It is cool and actually useful but it still operates on single instance, which is not ideal for me. So I decided to make a desktop application which creates shortcuts for my projects and those shortcuts should open multiple VS Code instances at once. While I'm creating this project, I also decided to make things, let's say, a bit interesting. I want to show you that what can be done in a single day. So I decided to turn this mini project into micro SaaS challenge. What I will do is to create a simple UI, make it do things and then list it for sale. But don't worry, I will share the whole business logic with you guys so you don't uh, have to buy it and implement it easily on your own as well. Anyway, let's get started. First, we need to look into the idea and our attacking strategy to make it all work. So our program essentially works on a batch file. For those who didn't know, batch file is similar to shell scripts on Unix based systems. It enables us to execute commands in Windows on a scripting manner. In our case, those commands would be really simple. They are just concatenated code commands, followed by the directories where our projects lie on. As you can see, this is the final batch file structure that we will be using. However, lines that have directories should be dynamic, which means that they need to be changed, added or removed depending on the user preferences. To do that, we can either have a simple terminal app or we can create UI to fetch the user input. In our case, I'll go with the second option. Since we are dealing with desktop UI, I choose Electron as our main framework to work on, which lets us to create our view using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But before I jump in and create those, I always look up my project's graveyard, because I usually have few nice designs there, so I can pull them off and use them. By doing it this way, I don't lose time, so I can focus on things that actually matter. Anyway, for this project, I picked the design from my previous Synchronment project, which started out as a IDE setting synchronization application, but the workload turns out to be too high, so I decided to pull the plug on that. But as you can see, it does have a nice UI. So with simple modifications, it turned out to be useful. It went from this to that. Now we can look on how it works. In this project, I take directories and shortcut name from the user. It all was enclosed under the sliding menus, so the interaction will be smooth. So if we click continue, it will slide into directory selection screen. In this screen, we have add directory and continue buttons. If a directory isn't provided, the continue button won't work. So we need to add directories. If we click and the add directory button, it will open up the folder selector menu, which is made with the show open dialog function under the dialog module inside Electron and the fetch directory was added uh, to the list on the background. Also, it was displayed uh, on the screen as a table element. So once we have added those files, we also need to provide the remove option for our users. Instead of adding remove button, I turn directory name color into red on hover and once the user clicked, I remove them from the list and from the table as well. It is as easy as that. At that point, user can continue with the next screen. In this screen, our user should give a name to the shortcut, which will be created on our desktop. So we need to take input field and hold the returned value as a parameter. Only thing I added here is that user should give a name at least three characters long, so it will be easier to recognize. At that point, we have all the required data, so now the real operations can begin. Under the hood, once our user clicked the final continue button, it will call a function. And inside that function, we create our batch file according to the structure I have shown earlier. Then we get the user data path and uh, write our batch file there. After that, we use Windows shortcuts module to create shortcut on the desktop, which has the .lnk extension. Finally, we add few icons and slide to our final menu, which only consists of text that informs our user that the operations were completed. We are almost done at that point. One thing that we need to do is package our application and create an installer. To package the application, I use the Electron Packager module. Using that is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is to specify few parameters. 
Once the application was packaged, we need to create MSI installer because it will make the installation process easier and it does provide additional options such as choosing the installation directory. To do that, we need to install few things. First is the Wix toolset and second is the Electron Wix MSI. The process is not super easy but it can be done. There are few good tutorials on how to do it so I will provide them uh, in the description. At that point, we are ready for the release. Many people thought that the release part is very complicated, but it is actually not. You don't have to create fancy landing page, create distribution services and integrate pay payment services as well. There are websites that enable you to do all in one, and Gumroad is one of them, which I will be using for this project as well. All you have to do is the upload to the upload the installer, set the price, provide accurate descriptions and finally add some image and videos. Then you are done and ready for sale. But obviously it doesn't mean that our product will be successful. There are many factors determine the success and marketing is one of them. Even if you have created a very good product without proper marketing, it probably has little chance of success. For this reason, sites like Product Hunt and Indie Hackers exist. But that is the topic for a whole another video. And I hope you've liked this video. If that is the case, please make sure to hit the like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below so I will do my best to answer them. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. And see you next time. Take care.